Welcome back to the Inside View Real Estate Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about the market crash forecast for 2022, maybe leading into 2023. You want to stay tuned for this one. See you on the inside. Hey guys, welcome back to the Inside View Real Estate Podcast. I am your host, Josh Zuniga. I'm with my amazing host, Carl What's Floyd. Up, and today we're going to talk about what everybody wants to know. What is the market crash going to happen? When, when is it going to happen? Is there a market crash forecast? What can we do? Uh, what do you foresee? Like, what is going on, you know, today, you know, in today's world? Well, Carl and I have been talking about this, you we'll know. crash, bro. Yeah. Well, is there going to be a crash? I don't right? know. You never know. Here, But... You, but there, there are some things that yeah. happen, right? Yes. There are some historical tendencies that we you always see, you know, when it comes to what people do with their money. And right. we talked about this, you know, off camera about we maybe foresee something happen um, in October. Yep. This is a different year though, right? But usually like we were talking about in October, you, uh, individuals usually start to allocate, you know, their money for different purposes uh, for tax reasons, right? Yes. To offset, you know, what their gains are so they have a, a reduced their tax liability uh, coming for towards the end of the fiscal year. Yeah, tax loss harvesting and some different things there. So yeah, you know, they're selling assets, they're doing, you know, reallocation of a portfolio. Exactly. So what um, happens with the market during that time when we're a lot of volatility, a lot of money? A lot of volatility. And yep. so what I'm thinking I'm seeing here is that, let me foreshadow this, the real estate market is a very big market. We're talking about hundreds, hundreds of billions. Okay, so put it in perspective. In the last 12 months, just in Phoenix Metro, just in Armless, about $110 billion in real estate has changed hands. Billion. Billion. Hundred and ten in the billion. MLS. That doesn't include commercial. That does not include off market deals. And that does not include a lot of new construction. Okay. And that does not include leasing at all. That's probably double. So we're that. talking a shitload of money. Yeah, that's probably two hundred billion. Yeah, probably. Easy. And so now you add up every metro area in all of the United States and you see how big of a you know machine that actually is. Mm -hmm. And then you say, Okay, I want you to shut it off tomorrow. And it can't happen, right? It takes time. And even in two thousand seven, two thousand eight there was writing on the wall and then the writing got bigger and then they started writing, you know, the letters in red and then people were like, Oh shit, I think something's wrong. And then lenders would go out of business one day. He'd be like, that's weird. And then more lenders would go out of business and be like, wait, there might be something going on here. And then you wake up one day and there's like, Holy shit, there's a fucking crash, but people are still <laughs> buying like me. Yeah. I'm still buying a house. This fucking idiot, you know? Yeah. And so like, I wrote it out to the very end, the very end, you know, and, and to the point where I got in, into some trouble where I had to short sale a house. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's so funny how big that, that ship is that, it, you know, it really does need a turn and it takes time for that to happen. So when we realize that and that greed tends to drive markets longer or deeper in than they should be mm -hmm. in both directions, right? So greed will drive a market that's hot, even hotter for way longer than it should be. Greed will drive a, a depressed market even further than it should be because there's opportunistic, uh, you know, there's there's an opportunity there to make yeah. money. And so when we say, hey, look, how soon is that going to change? Now, today is April 2022. You know, if we think about this in terms of like timing, yeah, probably October. It's going to take six months for this machine to even wind down. You flick off the switch, which is the interest rate hike, right? Yep. Flick off the switch. It still takes time to wind down. And so there's still a lot of pent up demand. And so... Economics is literally just built off of supply and demand. Well, we have a lot of demand. We don't have a lot of supply. And we're seeing supply shrink even further because you're having, you know, sellers saying, hey, look, if I was going to sell right now and I've got a 2.875% or a three and a quarter percent rate and you're asking me to go to another house that's, you know, five and a half percent, I'm going to pay $500, $600, $1,000 more. Double the rate. A month, yeah. double the rate. Uh, well, am I going to do that? Is that a far, smart financial move? Is that I, advantageous I, to me? It's Probably not going to make a fiscal uh, sense, right? But there is going to be need out there to change, you know, death, um, marriage, children, relocation, relocations, yep. you know, all those things are happening. We're seeing a massive shift in the migration patterns of Americans right now from the Northern States mm -hmm. in the democratic States to the Republican States. Mm -hmm. And so we're seeing that shift, that migration, which is propping up a lot of markets like Phoenix is really isolated, right? Seeing a lot of demand from Phoenix in, in terms of like, you know, people coming from Seattle, Chicago, New York, New Jersey, uh, California, Texas, you know, political refugees. Yeah. You know, so we're seeing all these political refugees flood the border and coming over from California and propping up the price here and in increasing demand. But in localities, maybe like California, we might see a more drastic shift 
away from buyers into a, you know, and uh, away from sellers into a, a buyer's market, right? And so we're seeing that demand really cool off pretty quickly, especially as affordability decreased with the increase in interest rates. Yeah. So that was a shitload. That was a lot of information. Thank you, yeah, Carl. Of course. We really appreciate I'm you for something. wrapping up the whole episode there. <laughs> I had to carry my weight. I had to carry my weight. <laughs> I'm yeah, totally sure. kidding. I'm totally kidding. But yeah, guys, you know, here, there's another thing that we didn't bring up too. Um, we've talked about it a little bit in, you know, in previous episodes. What's going to be happening you know, towards the, uh, towards the end of the year? Well, I hate to say, but midterm elections, right? Midterm elections, right? And guess what? They like just we spoke like before. What do they always need? uh, They need problems to solve. They need problems to solve. They need a bigger issue, you know, to really happen. And what is that bigger issue going to be? And what are they talking about? What have they been talking about for the last three or four months? You know, to change our perception of what the market really is. They've been talking about recession, yeah, of recession, course. recession, recession. And you guys need to think. I I always like to think about like big picture and like what is the real message? What is the underlying cause? What's really happening, right? So they're making like micro deposits into your subconscious about what's you know, what they want you to believe and perceive of what's happening in the market. And guess what? Interest rates are going up. You know, things are slowing down. Here within Arizona, supply is going is going down as well. So things are, and my parents um, own a credit reporting agency. They see uh, loan applications are going down by 25%, right? And But they've been going up, you know, 25% for the last three, uh, two years, but now they're seeing a decrease for sure over the last month. So what is that What is that seeing? People are starting to be a little bit more reserved with what their cash is, right? And, you know, something may happen, another event to really just spark off what this recession, quote unquote, may be, right? So we can have more political power and, and have more of a storyline for the Democrats to, to, to tap into and for the Republicans to tap into to see, like, what is the narrative that we're going to create with what the market's going through and how is this going to be the hero concept of like, who's going to actually fix this problem? Which party is going to do that, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing with like COVID, right? COVID was the big issue, you know, that happened, right? Who is going to help us get out of this mess? Who is going to create our solution? Who is going to be the one or which party is going to be the solution for what we need and who's going to be our hero for it, right? So if that does happen, you know, everybody just hold on to your pants, right? Yeah, I mean, shit, dude, they create problems left and right, you know, and distractions, it's fucking distractions. Yeah, it yeah. absolutely is, right? Who talks about COVID now? Yeah. I mean, dude, There's nobody get, talking about COVID. Where did it go? Hello? Not to get political, but we got to stop with the bullshit. Yeah. You know, legitimately. And yeah. I think people are actually starting to get wise to mainstream media, and they're saying, fuck you. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm going to add to that, too. Because yeah. you, you look at the bullshit, right? And the narrative is, look at this shit, and we'll talk about it. We'll relate We're to real estate. serious now. I go onto my Apple News app mm-hmm. the other day, and that's the first thing I do in the morning when I'm eating. And I look at it and it says interest rates over 7%. And I call my buddy. I'm like, yo, is this shit real? And he's like, fuck no. You can get a 5.5% 30-year fix today. He's like, if you want to get an adjustment mortgage, they're still in the fucking forest. And they're creating headlines. Why? Because they got to get fucking clicks. And they're, and they're killing the, the fucking job market. They're killing the perception of a, of a good you know, economy. And, and that perception creates reality. So these are fabricated fucking lies. They're lies. Mm-hmm. And good people need to start stepping up and saying shit. Like, I'm trying to hold back. It's fucking bullshit. Yeah. So, wake the fuck up. You gotta wake yeah, up. Yeah, I don't even cuss, you know, on 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 mic, but I'm Literally. gonna say you need to wake the fuck up. Yeah. Like, this is a... If we get real inspired with it. Yeah, you, people, you need to start really looking at what's the bigger picture, what's the reality that's really gonna, you know, unfold here. And the government's been lying to you since, since forever. Fucking day one. Yeah, since forever, right? Day one. The... The world that you live in or the world that you think you live in is not the world that we need to be living in. And I don't know if you really understand what that whole concept is, but just like what you're saying, they want you to believe a certain story and they want you to fall in line into assembly line of what they want you to, uh, what they want to tell you, right? So they can control what your movement is. Yes, they control the narrative. Exactly. So they can control what your habits are, what your decisions are, what you're going to be doing, you know, within the marketplace, what you're going to be doing with your family life. Everything is about control, right? Yeah, and so what you can do to take control back is get educated because it's very easy to influence undereducated people. It's very easy to influence undereducated people. But if you're educated and you know your shit and you know what the fuck you're talking about, they can't control you. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's as simple as that. You can make educated decisions and you can set yourself up for success. You can plan ahead. You know, those things that we talk about on the podcast. I think we're really genuine in, 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 in our hearts in the right place that we want you to succeed as a person. Mm-hmm. You know, we're here for a reason. We're not here to make fucking money. We're here to educate people so they can build wealth, generational wealth and get out of the fucking trap. Yeah. Right? And that's a big so thing, guys. Like, trust me, my, my, I was very, 
I was very grateful and very honored that my father and my mother were, you know, having me discuss financial education and what that really is in high school. Rich dad, poor dad, right there. What is an asset? What is a liability? Age of 16. I have no idea. How much you want to make, son? 100000 Well, how much are you left at the end of the year after taxes and all your bills? Not much. Nothing. Right? So how much you need to make? A lot more than 100000 mm-hmm. I hate to say it because a lot of people think that 100000 is like the huge, this big benchmark. And trust me, to get to 100000 your first 100000 is a bitch. It is a bitch and it's so hard. It seems like it's never going to happen. But once you do that... Then you figured it out, yeah. right? Then you figured That's out. Step with, one. Yeah, exactly. You figured out within your mind and your belief system within your heart that, whoa, I did it. Great. That's what everybody talks about. But this is what you really need to understand. You need to know what was the time, energy, and effort that you put in to make that 100000 And now you need to duplicate that process. Now that you reach that goal, how do we get to 120? How do we get to 150? How do we get to 200000 The only way you're going to do that is by investing in yourself, like Carl said, financial education figuring out what are the vehicles that I can actually depo- make deposits into, whether they're mental deposits, spiritual deposits, uh, to get you to the next level. And most of the time, the job that you're at probably ain't going to get you there, right? So if you have some natural talent, skills, and abilities, or even just the outright balls to do something different with your life, and you look yourself in the mirror and say, hey, I got this, let's go, let's step it up. I was like, you need to start making some decisions for yourself because everybody is like, poor me, I can't figure this out, I'll do this. I was like, hey, there's plenty and millions of people that have, have been able to do well for themselves and they didn't fall victim to what their uh, limited beliefs were about who they thought they were internally and they stepped the fuck up. Yeah. And it's time for a lot of people to like really step into who you are and start making some real, real decisions, some real hard decisions where you're not going to like it and you're going to feel very uncomfortable, but that's where growth comes from, right? 100%. 100%. Fucking nail it, dude. Yeah. So is the market going to crash? Who knows? Does right? it, wait, does it fucking <laughs> matter? And here's the thing. There's a difference between your personal economy and the general economy, right? Big you difference. You can create your own personal economy. Yeah. Like so everybody else can get fucked so, and you can still make money. Yeah. Is the market going to crash? Maybe. Am, am I excited about it? Yeah. Why? Because I know that I'm good. Yeah. Opportunity. Opportunity. Right? Opportunity. Everything's going to be at a discount because I've been, I was smart enough to start disciplining myself, you know, six years ago for an opportunity to come like this, right? Opportunities happened during COVID. I was able to get houses at good prices and boom, here. Awesome. I created in- income streams. I created cash flow. I have, you know, six different properties that are working for me, two Airbnbs that are working for me. And if something happens to those, fine. I'm totally good. As long as they're cash flowing, we're good to go. And then when things come on sale, if they ever do, right, we have cash reserves to do something with that too. Yep. But that's the thing, guys. You have to have the plan. Like we always say, if you don't have a plan, you're going to be, you're going to be left in the dust. And, and, you know, I think the goal of the podcast is guys, we give you the tools, the education, and the resources to be successful but you need to fucking execute mm-hmm. bottom line. Yep. Bottom line. It ain't going to do you shit. Listen to us freaking yap. If you're not doing shit about it. Yeah. I only, I, do, I wish you would listen to this one podcast and go off and do something. Yep. Call us, like give us, give us a phone call, send us an email and let's figure out how we can actually support you. Absolutely. Like Carl and I do, like you said, do this for a genuine purpose and that's to help. Yeah. I don't give a shit about yeah. the money. All we, all we want to do is help guys. Yeah. I was like, we know that there's a lot of things going on within our society within our market that people feel like they don't have control of. But the way you get control is like you say, you get educated and when you get educated, then you can make the decisions. And once you make, start making decisions, then you can figure out what are the best moves that you can make. And that's, that's really what it comes down to. I was like, we want you to be successful. We want you to grow. We want your families to be successful and our hearts are always here for you. That was good. That was good. We, all, right, all right, guys. And that's real honesty. We always keep it from the heart. We love you guys and we can't wait to see you on the next episode. Stay tuned. Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to today's episode. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, do all the things. We want to continue to bring value to you every single episode. Until next time, see you on the inside.